Out of all of Elden Ring's main attributes, there are five of them that directly affect the amount of damage that the player character will do. Strength, Dexterity, Intelligence, Faith, and Arcane. As for the way Elden Ring calculates damage, it is both complicated and convoluted, so we will be dealing with that in its own specific video. For now, in the present video, we will focus on the characteristics and details of Dexterity. Elden Ring defines dexterity as the attribute required to wield advanced armaments. It also boosts the attack of dexterity scaling weapons, it reduces the casting time of spells, softens fall damage, and it makes it harder to be knocked off your horse. As you can see, dexterity has many different uses that can benefit our characters. Let's take a look at them. The first thing to talk about is the most basic but also the most important one. Dexterity is the stat required in order to wield what the game calls advanced armaments. These are the finesse weapons like rapiers, curved swords and katanas for example. These weapons have dexterity as their primary requirement. In this video we will be working with the rapier. This is a basic and classic weapon that has been present in all of the Souls games. As you can see, this weapon has a dexterity requirement of 12. If you want to use this weapon effectively, you will need 12 levels of dexterity. If you do not meet this requirement, then your weapon will deal heavily reduced damage. It is simple to understand. When we spoke about the strength stat, we spoke about how we can get special bonuses if we two-hand our weapon. This will help us with meeting weapon requirements. Well, dexterity has no such bonuses. There are no special mechanic for dexterity requirements. You have to have exactly the amount of dexterity that each weapon requires or more. There is no way around it. Weapon damage scaling is a complicated subject. It is made up of multiple concepts and various calculations. I will be covering all of this in detail in a separate video. For now, the basic notion with dexterity is that all weapons that have dexterity scaling will have their damage increased as you level up your dexterity stat. Damage scaling is determined on a weapon per weapon basis, meaning that each specific weapon has different conditions and each will show different data. I've ran the number for multiple weapons in order to test the data and it is possible to establish different soft caps for the stat. As mentioned before, we will be working with the rapier in this video. For scaling data, we will be using a keen rapier plus 25, which has an A scaling in dexterity. Please take a look at these charts. On the top, you will see the correlation between your dexterity stat and the total AR of the Keen Rapier plus 25. In other words, what is the total AR of this weapon on each level of dexterity? On the bottom, you will see the correlation between your dexterity stat and the AR increase of the weapon. In other words, how much actual AR we get each time that we level up our dexterity. As always, it is important to look at the shape of the charts. On the top, you will see that the increase is more pronounced at the earlier levels, but as you get to the later levels of dexterity, the increase begins to flatten out. As we have talked about with every other stat, this is the work of diminishing returns. The more dexterity you have, the less you get from each level. How much less, exactly? Well, let's take a look at the bottom chart. As you can see, the earlier levels give either 6 or 7 AR per level. This is a lot. But then, at about level 20, the increase drops to either 4 or 3 AR per level. This drop marks the first soft cap of this skill, at level 20. Then, we continue to get about the same AR, 3 or 4 points, all the way up to level 55, where it drops again to either 2 or 3 AR per level. This is the second soft cap at level 55. Then we continue to get either 2 or 3 AR per level until we hit level 80. From then on, we only get 1 AR at most. So this is the third and final soft cap at level 80. Past this level, it is not worthwhile to level up dexterity as the returns we get are too few for the investment that we make. Please remember, Damage scaling is complicated. This data that I am showing you specifically for a keen rapier plus 25. Other weapons have different scaling, so they have different data. That said, the shape of the chart is always roughly the same. 
so we can establish the three soft caps for dexterity level 20, level 55, and level 80. The next effect of dexterity that we will go over is casting speed. The more dexterity that your character has, the faster they will cast their spells and incantations. Casting speed has a hard cap of level 70 dexterity. Going any higher than this level is useless for the purposes of casting speed. There are two ways to increase your dexterity in order to get faster casting speeds. You can manually level up your dexterity stat or you can take advantage of virtual dexterity. Virtual dexterity can be understood as levels of dexterity that do not appear in your stats page and only affect your casting speed. We're going to say that again. It only affects your casting speed. Virtual dexterity does not help you with weapon requirements. Virtual dexterity does not help you with weapon damage scaling. It only has one effect and it is to increase casting speed. The only way to increase virtual dexterity is through the use of equipment. Specifically, Elden Ring has two items that increase your virtual dexterity, meaning that they increase your casting speed. They are the Radagon Icon Talisman and the Azor's Glintstone Staff. The Radagon Icon gives your character a total of 30 virtual dexterity. Meanwhile, Azor's Glintstone Staff gives you a total of 40 virtual dexterity. As we mentioned before, the hard cap for casting speed is 70 dexterity. This means that if you use both of these items, then you already meet the hard cap, no matter what your actual level of dexterity is. Furthermore, we can reach this hard cap with 40 levels of dexterity plus the Radagon Icon, or 30 levels of dexterity plus the Azor's Glintstone Staff. Experiment with these different combinations in order to figure out what works best for you. Will you be leveling up dexterity, or will you be taking advantage of virtual dexterity? At the end of the day, the choice is yours. By now we know what casting speed is, how to increase it, and what the hard cap is. The next thing to go over is just how much of an increase there is. In Elden Ring, casting speed increases in a progressive manner, meaning that it increases little by little as you increase your dexterity. Specifically, casting speed increases every 10 levels of dexterity, and it increases between 3 to 5% at each breakpoint. To make things simple, let's settle on the fact that casting speed increases an average of 4% every 10 levels of dexterity, whether it's actual or virtual. If we were to calculate the full casting speed increase from 9 dexterity, the lowest level of dexterity possible, and 70 dexterity, then we would get a total increase of about 31% casting speed. Now, 31% casting speed sounds like a lot, and honestly, it is. A 31% increase of anything is not only considerable, but extremely valuable. That said, in reality, this full increase only accounts for a few frames. Indeed, at full 70 dexterity, you will only be saving a handful of frames when you cast a spell. While this may sound disappointing, it actually does have its uses. The most important thing to understand is that we will be saving a few frames on every spell that we cast. Each casting shaves a few frames of startup on each spell. This means that the more spells we cast consecutively, the more frames we will save. The result is that if we cast a lot of spells back to back, then all of the frames that we save will add up, and as a result, we will be able to get one or two additional castings in the same amount of time. If that happens, then this is a direct increase to damage per second. If you're the type of player that casts spells back to back, then having a faster casting speed is definitely useful to you. On the other hand, if you mix spells with weapon attacks and ashes of war, then you will get less use from a faster casting speed. It all comes down to your personal playstyle. Now, 
My dear viewer, what you are now seeing is a full comparison of casting speed at every breakpoint of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 and 70 dexterity. In this test I will cast 10 glintstone pebble spells back to back with the different casting speeds. With this example you will be able to see the actual difference of casting speed at each increase breakpoint of the stat. Please take a look. In Elden Ring, verticality is a very important part of the game. With the ability to jump, platforming becomes very important and exploration gains a new degree of complexity, especially in dungeons. This forced the game to modify the way it deals with fall damage. Generally speaking, any fall under 16 meters will deal no damage. Any fall over 20 meters will immediately kill the player. This leaves us with the player character taking fall damage from any fall between 16.1 meters and 19.9 meters. It is very difficult to gauge distance in Elden Ring, and this makes fall damage apparently inconsistent. In so far as the dexterity stat goes, the higher your dexterity is, the less damage you will take from survivable falls. The reduction in damage is progressive, meaning that your character will take a little less damage from each level that you put into dexterity. That said, there are some breakpoints to take into consideration. First of all, there is no damage reduction up to level 20 dexterity. After that, full damage is reduced little by little from level 21 dexterity up to the hard cap of level 99 dexterity. Most of the time, the damage difference is not noticeable, but at the later levels it becomes considerable. From level 20 dexterity, where there is no reduction, up to level 99 dexterity, which is the maximum reduction, the difference is 20%. At 60 vigor, with no other equipment, this is what 20% full damage reduction at 99 dexterity looks like. In all honesty, it is a good difference but I do not believe that it is considerable enough to justify a dexterity investment. This type of damage reduction is a nice bonus for dexterity builds, but I would never level up dexterity just for this reason. The final benefit that our character gets from leveling up dexterity is an increase to the character's resistance from being knocked off Torrent, the horse, while in mountain combat. My dear viewer, I'm gonna be honest with you. I believe that this is correct because the game says it is. I do not believe that the game or its developers have any reason to not be truthful about it. That being said, after all of my testing, I could not find any correlation between mounted combat resistance and dexterity. On your screen, you are seeing two of my characters get hit repeatedly by the first Godric soldier right after the Church of El. This is at the very beginning of the game. The character on the left, the armored knight, has only 13 dexterity. On the other hand, the character on the right, with the halberds, has a total of 80 dexterity. As you can see, there is no difference in the amount of hits it takes for both characters to be knocked off torrent. Both characters fall to the ground under the same circumstances. Number 1, 4 light attacks. Number 2, three light attacks and one strong attack, and number three, one light attack and two strong attacks. I was unable to find any difference at all in my testing. That being said, if you have found different results, or if you believe that my testing is flawed and incorrect, do not hesitate to let me know in the comments below. I would be happy to understand this better and make any revisions necessary. I truly do appreciate your cooperation. On paper, Dexterity is one of the most beneficial stats in the game, 
it affects many different aspects of all characters providing many different bonuses. The most obvious synergy is between dexterity and spellcasting, but also with the speed and lightweight aspects of dexterity-based weapons. It is this speed that also gives dexterity an immediate affinity with status effects, due to the fact that the more we attack, the faster these effects stack up. All in all, it is definitely worth investing in these kinds of builds, whether that be a pure dexterity or some kind of hybrid. I personally do not have much of a preference for it, but it would be foolish to deny its utility. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope that I get to see you on the next one.